In a list of the most exciting innovations poised to change the world, you probably wouldn't expect to find printing. Sure, 3D printing is doing some extremely cool things. But for most people, printing still means something at best routine and uninspiring, and at worst, slow, expensive, and painfully frustrating. But what if I told you that printing has an ace up its feed, one that could herald a revolution in medical science, saving up to tens of thousands of lives a year? What if, instead of just churning out paper and plastic, our printers could print us? To understand how, let's go back to 1954 and meet a man named Richard Herrick. Aged just 23, Richard was dying of kidney disease, but received a new lease on life when he underwent the first successful kidney transplant, thanks to the Nobel Prize-winning work of Dr. Joseph Murray and a generous donor. Since then, transplantation has become ubiquitous. In 2021, over 40,000 transplants took place in the US alone. But despite this progress, demand for organs vastly outstrips supply, with many times more people still waiting for a donation. Nevertheless, there is hope, and it comes not from the hospital, but the home office. In the early 2000s, bioengineering researchers realized that the key to meeting the need for donor organs might lie in technology they already had, an ordinary, off-the-shelf inkjet printer. They made a few modifications and, after thoroughly cleaning the ink cartridges, filled them with live cells in a liquid solution, a kind of bioink, which they programmed the machine to print layer by layer into an organic structure. The cells then did what comes naturally and bonded together, forming the first 3D printed living tissue. Since then, one of the biggest advances, which promises to make bioprinting even more revolutionary, has been where the cells in that solution come from, patients themselves. By taking a biopsy about half the size of a postage stamp and using that to grow more cells, it's possible to print an organ constructed from a patient's own organic material, essentially one that's genuinely theirs. This represents a huge step towards solving one of the biggest problems for transplantation, rejection, which happens when the recipient's immune system recognizes genetically foreign material and attacks it. Remember Richard Herrick? The reason his operation was successful is that the generous donor was his identical twin brother, Ronald, whose kidney was a genetic match that could evade Richard's immune defenses. Rejection is a smaller problem today than in 1954, but only because most transplant patients take drugs that suppress their immune responses for months, years, even decades after their operation, and these make them dangerously vulnerable to infections. In theory, personalized organs would make this unnecessary, rendering them safer than traditional transplants. Of course, technology this futuristic isn't cheap. The first bioprinter may have been a MacGyvered inkjet, but things have moved on, and today they can cost around $200,000 each. Now, that's nobody's idea of spare change. But when you consider that the average kidney transplant costs around $400,000, it's easy to see that in the long run, bioprinting could save money as well as lives. This is especially true when you consider other potential uses, printing organs to use in drug trials, for example, or for surgeons to practice their slicing and dicing on. The wider the adoption of the technology, the better the chances that mass production will drive down costs, making life-saving organs not only available, but widely accessible. All this adds up to a medical dream come true, but it hasn't quite come true yet. Experts largely agree it's going to take the rest of the 2020s at least to overcome the remaining obstacles. Immune system rejection is still a problem, while perhaps the biggest difficulty is in printing blood vessels, which it turns out are pretty important if you want to keep the organs alive once they're inside a patient's body. There are also potential legal issues. In the US, it took 30 years after that 1954 operation for transplantation to become fully regulated, something we should definitely avoid repeating if we don't want to risk a black market of dodgy home-printed organs springing up. Current laws don't specifically cover bioprinted materials, which could cause complications when deciding whose treatment takes priority, or whether printed organs should be treated like donated ones, which can't be sold, or as medical devices, which can. Today, being on an organ donor waiting list means living in limbo, hoping for a life-saving donation that may never come. 
Bioprinting could do away with those years of anxiety. And while this may seem like a utopian dream, a century ago, the same could have been said of organ transplantation. Clearly, this technology still faces challenges. But with bioprinted bladders already in use, and other experiments like bioprinted ovaries for mice bearing fruit, we might be closer than we realize to a future where transplant waiting lists are a relic of the past and bioprinters are as unremarkable as the inkjet on your desk.